word. God, thank you for this time, for this worship. And as we go into your word, Lord, as we go through it, um, you did, you worked miracles. You bring people back. You, you, you stir up the souls and the hearts, just everything in us, Father. This is all about you. So we just give you this time. Lord, let these words be your words. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Um, I know it's two weeks in a row. Dan is, uh, you know, taking a little bit of time. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we need breaks once in a while. Um, this morning, I know we don't have anything on the screen, but this is kind of appropriate because we're going to be going into the book of Nehemiah. And, uh, and Nehemiah was, um, um, it's, it's, it's a great book. And, um, and I just, um, you know, it's about captivity. They came out of captivity. And Nehemiah, God put it upon this man's heart to, uh, you know, to go back in and, and build the walls. But um, the, um, I've got a bunch of notes here. Um, how do I put this? You know, it's always like, where do you start? You know, and uh, I know you start in scripture here, but we're going to be in Nehemiah chapter eight. And, um, and it's, it's called reforming the people. Literally, kind of get the ball rolling again. And, uh, and many times, even when we're walking with the Lord, we kind of need to get a little bit of a, a little jump start. You know what I mean? A little re-reminder of what's going on and where we've been. And, uh, and at this point in Nehemiah, they've been in captivity for 70 years. And what it's going to boil down to is, can you imagine spending 70 years and not hearing this, not reading the word, not having any change in your life that way? Now, because this is what this is what God's going to do. He's going to change you as you read. It's for reproof, you know, for teaching, for correction and all that. None of that. None of that. See, this is what the enemy wants. They want to take you into captivity and they want to yank this right out of your life regardless of how beaten up it is, just take this out of your life, and it's as simple as that. And then the damage is done. And uh, so they went into captivity in 586, and then you had your first exile, went back in to rebuild and to kind of go in. And, um, and Zerubbabel did it. And the first problem with, after all the captivity and all that going back in, is they met resistance. Isn't that amazing? Meeting resistance. And it wasn't just from the outside. It was from the inside. Because remember, when Nebuchadnezzar, when they took off, when they when they took captivity in the place, they left the remnant. So there were some people left behind. Okay, the enemy, they're going to do whatever is good for them. And they saw the damage. They're like, we'll leave these people behind. They are useless. And we're going to take in the ones that we know. And, and you take guys like Nehemiah. You know, I wrote it down, some of these dudes. Nehemiah, you've got um, Ezekiel, Daniel, Malachi. There was a bunch of them. Jeremiah. All these guys went into captivity together. You know, a little bit different as far as times and years and all that. But they all went into captivity. And you're thinking, hmm, this is interesting. So God's got this plan, and all these men were of noble positions in Babylon, okay? So God knows what he's doing, even in this captivity. I, when, you, when we read this, you're going to go, well, we're living in this right now. We're living in this right now. And the resistance, I find it amazing. Of what we have gone through this last week with Israel, okay, all the damage that has happened, and you find resistance in our own country, like, oh, no, that's not the problem. It's them. They're the problem. And I'm like, this is amazing, amazing. I mean, you, you have what has happened as far as the Israelis have taken a whooping on this, you know, from the missiles and all that. And there are people out there from the government, from colleges, such a fertile ground of liberalism, say, no, 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 they're the problem. The Israelites, there's your problem right there. Has this not been the story ever since day one? 
It's God's people. Not that they're perfect, but God used them to promote his son, to bring his son through Jesus and to, and to come into the world through the Jews. But um, have they not complained about the Jews always? Always. And you see this now. The hatred that's spewing out and all that. And you're like, wow, we need to know the truth. So you had the first exile, and then you had a regime change. Went from Xerxes to Artaxerxes, and these are bad dudes. And what happened? They let them go back in the land. These are bad kings, okay? Obviously, God changes hearts of these leaders. And, so, and he, they gave these men money, like Ezra and Nehemiah money they gave them safety to go back into the land and uh, protection and then they gave the vision of what to do on what god wants through the midst of all the troubles don't think that god doesn't have this one all under control he knows and he also knows the people in fact what's amazing is, is when you take a situation like with what's going on in the world right now God is going to reveal the true enemy, and he's also going to reveal the true leaders on where, where this thing is going. And he makes it very easy for us to see. All we have to do is has eyes who see and ears who listen. And God, he, um, you know, he knows. Um, so you had a regime change. And then right in the middle of this captivity is you have, um, remember Queen Esther? In the book of Esther, okay, that's going on at the same time. It's just, this is in Babylon, okay? And remember Haman, the man who hated, he wanted to kill and exterminate all the Jews. <laughs> See the same thing going on now. See, it's not our fault, it's their fault. They're the ones, simply because just who they are. So that was happening right in the middle there. And then in about 30 years later, Ezra, God brought Ezra into the land, and he rebuilt the temple. And then about 15 years after that is we get Nehemiah, and he rebuilt the walls, okay? So God is always moving. We can become, I can become fixated on what's going on out there sometimes. And God's like, that's going on, but he's moving, and he's moving in hearts. And just like Shannon was saying, and it's funny, we got this, like this plague hit, you know what I mean? Shannon says she's not feeling good, you know, we got this, you know, empty spot, empty parking lot over here, you know, <laughs> but she was saying about how, um, um, I forgot what she was saying about um, um, being the light in this world. Boy, is it not easy to get beaten down and thinking, man, I'll tell you what, I don't think I got much of a light, you know what I mean? I might have like a little tiny flashlight, but it's not much of a beacon out there. Yeah, you do. You'd be amazed. Just a little bit of Jesus goes a whole long ways out there, I'll tell you, because they're getting just the opposite out there. So you've got Zerubbabel, you got Esther, who didn't go back in the land, but she was dealing with her own things. And then you got Ezra, and then you got Nehemiah. And there's just a long list. And this Nehemiah guy here, he... um. He is, um, what a leader he is. That's what we need. We need leaders, people who have a vision for Christ. This is what I like to see. Um, the, um, um, he was a, an encourager. He ran with what God put on his heart. And you know the beautiful thing about it, too, is this man dealt with the enemy, Okay. Nehemiah is a good example for all of us, that we can do all these things. Little by little, we walk with him, we grow, and at the same time, too, we can take on the opposition out there. Because, folks, right now, I mean, it's like the cloak has been taken off. You can see who's who. You throw Jesus in there, and you're going to find out what's going on. You know, we talked about this last week. God's Word is... Just like that metal detector. It's like a Geiger counter. You know, it's just like, <laughs> it starts going off. You'll know who's who. But when you just throw Jesus' word out there, our Lord's word, and then and, and it's just off to the races. And these men represented God. They came from Babylon is Iraq. Persia is Iran. So you've got, you can see these world 
stage set even back then, and you can see the resurgence of what's going on right now. And it's all about, hey, Christianity. You know, you bring up the name of Jesus, oh, it's bad, because it goes against the other gods. One of our problems is we've invited a lot of gods into our country. So it starts diluting things down. We need to stand firm, stand firm in the world. I go to the Gospel Rescue Mission quite a bit down there, and I am constantly telling them, this is the Gospel Rescue Mission, okay, built on Christ. The Lord came upon this man's heart to donate that facility for, I think it's still a dollar a year. Isn't that cool? Yeah. You can't give it away because then you got all this tax stuff and all that, and he goes, okay, well, we'll just it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a buck a year. You know, so that's that that's what that facility is ran on. Regime change. Changed heart. God put it upon that man's heart. He's like, huh, I'll do this. Okay. And it doesn't sound like he really was focused that way all of his life. It's just all of a sudden it came upon him. And God does this to a buck. You want it, you can have it. It's gonna cost you a buck. So this is why, but I constantly remind them. Um, but the, you know, and I wrote on here, you know, we have a lot of negative things coming even from our upper echelon in the government. Mm -hmm. Very, very anti-Christ, very much. Um, you know, so, but we have a God who is a mighty God. And it can drag us through when we're not feeling good. Come in here and do that worship. He's like, I want to get through this because I just want to do it. When we we drag ourselves it's like you know what I just I just really want to spend some time with the Lord and all that. That's our God. I was sitting with a woman last night and uh, at church and uh, she said, you know what? It doesn't make any difference. Like we just like well, or is there like a list of certain things that are really bad in the church that you kind of? I say you're talking tradition. You're talking tradition. If you like, why don't you just start? picking out some of these disciples and some of the stuff that they've done. You know what I mean? And you're like, you know, how'd you like to, how about the assassin? You know, can you, can you love an assassin like Paul? <laughs> he wrote two thirds of the new Testament, you know, Peter denial, David, you know, he, he cheated, you know, and all that, the man of God's heart, you know, there, there's, there's the top three right there. You know what I mean? Can, can you enjoy that? Can you, can you move from there? God doesn't, he, he came for the hurting. So, um, the, um, I'll also start reading here, I guess, huh? It, this is a really easy passage too. I love it. And I love easy passages. This is a huge chapter in the Bible. Huge. Because it's so simple. And, um, in, um, in Ezra. Now, before I start that, remember back in chapter two, when Ezra went back into the land, and he's checking out the damage. It got so bad that he's 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 on his horse mount and all that. They're like, he had to get off the horse and walk around all the rubble. That's how bad it was. You know, sometimes you just got to kind of get down off that horse and you got to walk the path with God. And you're like, you know what? This is getting out of hand. This is really getting out of hand. And you can see the damage in other lives. Sometimes we go crazy, of course, sometimes. But God's like, you know what? We can repair this. We can take care of these things. So in, in the beginning here, it says, in chapter 8 of Nehemiah, verse 1, is um, when the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their own towns, all the people assembled as one man in the square before the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So they go back into the land, and, um, and they all come in through the water gate. Everybody's welcome. That was the normal gate that they came through. Just like we have a door right there. Everybody is welcome to come on in. You know, just like J. Vernon McGee says, you know what? God puts the cookies on the bottom shelf this way. Everybody can grab a cookie. You know what I mean? I love it. And I say it so many times. Guy's been dead, what, for like 40 years. You know, still quoting the guy, you know. But you know what? 
a true heart is a true heart. And um, um, the um, so they came in, and um, and they um, and they told Ezra to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which is probably the Pentateuch, which is the five first five books, and um, and which was taken into captivity. God's word. That's amazing. That's amazing, isn't it? Um, I think lives get that way a lot of times too. They get a little crazy and distraught, and they start forgetting about God, and He's way on the back burner and all that. And uh, and remember one thing too: the enemy, the enemy doesn't care about this. He's going to take this Bible and your old tennis shoes and throw them all out in the trash pile. They don't care about that. That's about as worthless to them as saying. But it's everything to us. And they brought it out. Remember Belshazzar? Remember David? All the riches they had that were given into the temple under Solomon. Okay? Years down the road, okay, when David, when they went into captivity, remember, Babylon took all the gold. They took all the goods. They took everything. Remember in David when the handwriting was on the wall? And, um, and um, uh, what's his name? Belshazzar, the son of, uh, of, um, of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. You know, all this, you get this handwriting on the wall, and they brought in Daniel, you know, like, hey, uh, they're all whooping it up and all that. Would they say, bring in all the stuff, all the, all the gold and all that. Let's, uh, let's party and let's do it. Let's, let's praise their gods, you know, and they're making a joke about it. This is the stuff. It was taken into captivity, all this stuff. And this stuff right here, that's what they're going in to get. And this this is what they're talking about right now. He says, bring out the word. You know, they kind of like blow it off, and they bring it out there. And this is a new beginning again. And um, in Ezra, bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. In two. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law of before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it out aloud from daybreak till noon, and as he faced the square before the water grate in the presence of the men, the women, and others who could understand. And all of the people listened attentively to the book of the law. So, they read this, and from daybreak till noon. Well, when's the last time you pulled that one? You know what I mean? A daybreak to noon. And uh, I mean, well, I, I have a heart sometimes just throwing in 15 minutes, you know? And uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, but they did. And they, they listened attentively. Some of the buzzwords here are going to be clarity, and they're going to be obedience, Having that fervency, having a clarity of God's word is so important. Knowing what's going on and what it really means. So you've got um, you've got so they're 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 taking it to the folks. And Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion, and beside him on his right side stood here we go Matthiah, Shema, Ananiah, Uriah, Hilkiah. Messiah, and on his left were Pediah, Michelle, Michal, Hashum, Hashkmanon, and Zach. Zechariah and Meshulam. So you got you got folks on the left. Pick up on this. You got the ones on the left, and you got the ones on the right. Okay? You realize you can have differences with brothers and sisters as far as opinions on things and all that. And you can still be Christians, and you can still be on the same side, but sometimes you're going to get little differences here and there. You know what I mean? Now, it gets a little interesting. Now, we're not talking sp- like differences in doctrine and all that, but you're going to have, you're going to have um, little things like that. But he brought in these people to help give out God's word. Remember, Nehemiah is like a lay pastor. He wasn't a priest, okay? But he had talents. Dan gets up here. Dan is our pastor, okay? His job is to equip the saints. 
So you saints and me, I fall in the same group as you, that we can get out there, just like Shannon was saying, and be the light in a world. It's as simple as that. And we all have different gifts that God gives us. He gives every one of us at least a gift. And these are things that God gives to to further his kingdom. And this is something that um, I think is um, we need to be re-reminded. And these people have been in captivity. You know, last week I did a an altar call at the mission. Oh, gosh. There's like tons of people. I don't do nothing. Nothing. All I do is give God's word. It's as simple as that. And he does all the work. The people come down and they're crying and they got their friends with them and then they're praying. And and it's like, and everybody else is praying for them. And I'm sitting there watching this. The beautiful thing is, is I get to look at all the faces that are coming down. I get to see everything. And I just, Jim, this is just Nehemiah. But through the Lord on how he can work in his life, on how God works through my life a little bit, and he works through your life, we get to witness these miracles and the changes of the hearts. Okay? And that's what this man's doing. He's just utilizing these gifts that God's given him. So, and so he's standing on this pedestal, um, which is kind of cool. I don't know. Maybe this is a new thing for them, you know? And uh, so, and Ezra opened the book in five. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. And Ezra praised the Lord, the great God. And all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their face to the ground. Wow. That's some fervent worship there. Remember when they bowed down before? Remember when they went into captivity? Remember Daniel, Shadrach? Meshach and Abednego, remember those dudes? Yeah. Remember they had the big statue up for Nebuchadnezzar, you know, when the band, you know, when they stopped the music, everybody's got to hit the deck and you got to worship that idol. All of a sudden, you got a whole different situation now. We ain't worshiping nothing except for God. And that's a re-reminder. And, and that's the way it should be. And in our country, and in our community, we need to be continually praying that God would continue revealing himself through us and for protection in everything that we can ask for because it's under attack. And this captivity comes in many different forms in all of our lives, the community, our country. You can see this. You see these regime changes, what happens. You can see the captivity. You can see how the enemy comes in and wants to take everything and throw it in the trash pile and just get rid of stuff and all that. You worship me. We don't worship some dude. Some dude is not dragging us up into heaven. We have our Lord Jesus, who it says in Romans 10, all who call upon and worship in their heart, know in their heart and, and confess with their mouth that he is Lord and Savior and he died for our sins, will be saved. It's not rocket science. And this is simple of just bringing God's word back back into people's lives, and what happens? And what happens here? So, the Levites, Jeshua, Benai, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shemanthai, Hodiah, Messiah, Kalida, Azariah, Joza, Hanan, and Peliah, instructed the people <laughs> in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people could understand what was being read. Now, that's a gift right there. The longer you're in the Word, God will bring clarity. And that's what people need to hear. There's people, just like Sam was saying earlier, she works at a uh, counseling center. And, uh, and I'm sure it's very liberal. And, and she's got to ask those questions. And she's like, this is amazing. There's no God at all. Nothing. They're confused. They're like, well, and you talk to people, so they're like, well, I believe in something. There's something out there. I'm like, well, I've seen, I mean, you know, I've seen Star Trek episodes where there's, you know, clouds, 
you know, kind of like, you know, do all this. And you're like, well, there's something there, you know. No, there's more than something. There's a God who truly moves in all of our lives. And what's so important, too, is, is having clarity. It's almost like these men were put into the crowds. And Nehemiah, or Ezra, he's the priest, he gives it out. And God places these men in the crowd. And you got all these thousands and thousands and thousands of people these men who are instructed in the word are looking around and people say, do you understand what it means? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm going with this? Like a big Bible study. You know what I mean? Where that'd be like on day two here, but this is what God does. He sprinkles them, you into society. Say, do you understand what this means? And for us to say that we have to know, what God's word means in our lives. And this is the Holy Spirit. And so, and, and God, you know, the, they just came into captivity. God is not looking for the perfect people. I remember I had a baseball coach. I mean, I, I've always said stories in my baseball years and all that. And it's like, great coaches, I had this coach, man, he was so funny. He was right. He was a friend of mine, too. And uh, he would always say, just get on base, man. You know, I don't care if you get hit by the ball. I don't care what you do. You know what I mean? Crowd that plate. You know, bunt, drag bunt. You do whatever. God isn't looking for home run hitters. He just wants us to get on base with him. And he'll take it from there. You know? And then, and then you just start tearing things up, you know? And then the enemy, they can't stand that. So they brought in, um, in, um, um, so they brought, um, where am I at here? So then Nehemiah, so this was at, uh, in nine, and they, and, and they asked so they could bring clarity to un, this way the people would know what God's word meant. And then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to them all, This day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Well, it had been 70 years. Now, granted, I'm sure there was talk amongst each other, okay? But still, I think this is what happens when God re-enters. When he comes back and people come back to the Lord, these emotions, they're high. They realize just where had they been? All these years. Do you remember? I don't, you know, I mean, I spent I spent many years away from the Lord. And I grew up in in the Catholic Church and all that. But when I finally hit, when I came back to Calvary, and I'm not saying Calvary's the, the ticket, you no, know, but God's word is given freely. But when I finally came back, it's like I'm like, wow. I just I felt like I've been driving out in the desert for years. And eventually, I just kind of like got back on the highway. And, and that was me. And it's like, wow, I just felt this release. And I felt this, this just this joy. And you almost feel like crying. You know what I mean? And you, could, you can picture this. These people are like, here we are. This is what we missed and all this time. And that's God's presence in lives. So, um, so Nehemiah said, go and enjoy cho cho uh, choice food. Sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. So go, enjoy what God's given you, and help others. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And um, the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a sacred day. Do not grieve. And then in 12, all the people went away to eat and drink and to send portions of food um, and to celebrate with great joy because now they understood the words that had been made known to them. The clarity, the hunger, and the thirst, knowing what God's word means. God tells us in Scripture to that we can handle God's word in and out of season. You're thinking, huh, in and out of season? It's when in season is when you really pop. Out of season and you're like kind of, you know, yeah, things are slowing down a little bit, and, you're like, and all of a sudden something comes up, and then you're there. 
You know, and God throws you a bat like you can get late in the innings, like get in there and get a hit. You're like, okay, you know, you can do that because you're in God's word. That doesn't mean that you've drifted away out of season for like three, four months. You're like, oh, okay, let me read up and all that. No, we're always reading up. But we are in the game and he throws us that bat and we're there. And then in 13, we'll end this thing here real quick. On the second day of the month, the heads of all the families along with the priests and the Levites, gathered around Ezra the scribe to give attention to the words of the law that they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded through Moses. And it says um, that the Israelites were to live in booths during the feast of the seven months and that they should proclaim his word and spread it throughout their own territories and in Jerusalem. So these booths... Um, you've had the festival of tabernacles when they were released from Egypt, when God gave the Israelites freedom to get out of Egypt, that's what they do. They lived like in these little huts and things that they make, you know, and, um, and as they traveled through and, um, this is God's way of reminding us on how he took care of them while they were on the run on the move, and they were out of that captivity, on how God took care of us through the times in our lives. Can you remember when you were going through a rough time there and how God provided things and all that, and he lays protection on us when we go through these times in our lives. And that's what he's saying here. Don't forget what God has done for you on who God is. And notice, too, on the second day, they came back. It's almost kind of like a Bible study. You know what I mean? That's okay. We gave out God's word. Now we're going to be talking through it now. You know what I mean? We have a, uh, a small little men's study we have in here every Thursday, and we simply go word by word right through the Bible. And right now we're in First King, Second King, First King, Second Kings, and um, we just break down what it talks about. The majority, I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of churches out there. First Kings, Second Kings, they're going to go. Where's that? Is that, uh, is, is that uh, is, you know, is that the New Testament, Old Testament? What are they? they have no idea. They don't go through the Word. Many times they'll talk about topics, cool topics, things that people want to hear about. Well, you know what? God didn't ask opinions here. He says, look it. I want to re-remind you that you need my Word. We need His Son. This is why we're all sitting here right now. It's because we gave our lives to Jesus. And he's like, you know what? And furthermore, be Jesus out there and stay in Christ as long as you invite him in. Keep it going. Keep that fire burning and, re and, you know, and, and remember all the things that he's done in our lives. And, you know, the captivity, you know, there's still captivity. There's captivity in our lives. We fall victim to so many things out there, but we need to keep our hearts open to Christ and to, uh, and to enjoy what he has. And it's just a, um, you know, these things are just re-reminders of all the things that God has done. Um, and I'm going to end it there, but um, I love guys like Nehemiah because, because God chooses the simple things to confound the wise. And, uh, and that's where we all come in. All of us, every single one of us, there's powerful messages that he can do. And our spend time with God, and you'll experience that kind of um, just the, the emotions that we do. I mean, we don't want to run our lives on emotions, but we experience that joy. And we will experience that walking and talking with God. We're like, man, you know, what's going on here? You know, and he, he has these discussions with us in our lives. God guides them. And he continues guiding the nation of Israel. And God will continue protecting on what he can. And as he's doing that, remember, God is revealing who's who in this world. He's going to reveal the real evil, and he's going to reveal the true leaders. You know, these priests back then were just, you know, they were priests. These guys were lawyers. They're like uh, notaries. They did it all, you know. And then on the flip side, you've got those that aren't priests, but are the true package of what God's putting together to get out there. And that's where we come in, okay? We're not priests, but um, 
but you know, in Indian's case, um, but um, but that we would be strong and to remember even the things that we see out there, we stand and walk firmly and strongly with the Lord. Amen. Pray, God, thank you uh, for your word. I mean, it's pretty simple. It really is. And God, that you have a way in our lives and, um, and you've been protecting us all along. We can feel like we're kind of wandering out the wilderness sometimes, but God, you're not, you haven't gone anywhere. So Lord, that we would always have our hearts on for you, that we would be obedient and Lord, and then we would just have that, um, that hunger for you, father. That's all it takes. It's as simple as that. So Lord, we praise you for everything. And, um, and I thank you for my brothers and sisters, friends, simply friends. That's what our Lord Jesus is. He's our God, and yet he associates with us, and he walks with us, just like, Lord, you walked with those disciples, and uh, they were your friends. Father God, that's who you are. You are a loving, powerful God. So take care of us and guide us by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.